back to this final game of Skate Around 3 tournament parts. So this is game six, and we are at the final game. This is the gold medal match. I'm Dork Mistress. I'm Riggs. And we have Namur Roller Girls, the hosts of this fabulous Skate Around 3 tournament, up against Nantes Derby Girls, coming as in as the highest ranked team. Both teams have two wins each, so this is it. This is the decider. It is, it is going to be quite the game here. We are building a little bit of a crowd here at Skater Round 3 right now, not just finishing their warm-up, but it is going to be quite the game between Nantes and Nemur. Absolutely. So on the team for Namur today, we have 021 Crevetto, 03 Nappy, 12 Brulegom, 1957 Batsmash, 31 T Rex Elliot, 382 Rust in Pieces, 39K, 393 Grumpy and Up, 4 Big Gaze, 4040 Blue Velvet, 66 Los Angeles, 666 Left for Dead, 89 Pulp Eviction, 9 Jackie, 934 Tinker. And representing non Derby girls today is 017 Iron Duck, number 11 Valdang, number 12 Adrenalines, number 15 Zaza, number 199 Tankerbell, number 25 Barbie Roost, number 345 Bloody Cherry, number 3615 Johnny, number 42 Nem Assist, number 44 Greenberger, number 53 Buzz, 5446 Groovy Beat, number 6 The Captain Dead, number 678 Mad Guyver, number 8 Lizzie Ryder. So what we're seeing just at the start of this game, this is a big day in Belgium. It is a national day celebrating um, or, you know, commemorating, I think, you know, um, stopping violence against women. There's a big protest happening in Brussels um, and obviously all the leagues, all the officials, all the volunteers, all of us support highlighting the need to stop violence against women. Absolutely. So we're just taking a moment here before our final game of this wonderful tournament just to mark this moment and commemorate it. As you see, both teams lining up with our wonderful officials for this final game just to preserve the moment in posterity and also to make our point. And you will see that um, they that all the people involved have got uh, purple on their hands, purple being the, the colour around the pr uh, to, to commemorate the protest. And so it's, as you say, commemorating this moment, showing our support for stopping the violence against women. So we're here for the last game of this tournament. I am Toxic Lady. I am Pickles. And it is great to see this level of commitment from the community uh, involved in so many issues. Um, it is something that's important that goes to the very heart of WFTDA and the values that we hold um, here at this WFTDA recognised uh, certified tournament. Oh, my apologies uh, here right now. But look at them all lined up, all friends, <laughs> before the final grudge match gets yeah. underway. And this tournament has also supported Bruzel, who collect and deliver menstrual protection to women in need. And as you say, it's so important to the values that we hold as a sport. And, you know, they have an overflowing box, uh, collection box here for Bruzel's. And it's a fantastic event to be part of because there's such a commitment, as you say. Absolutely. Uh, and the teams are making their way back to their respective benches now. Uh, we are seeing our wonderful officials get themselves into position. We will, of course, tell you who they are in a little bit. But uh, they are a great crew. They've been amazing all weekend. NSOs, officials and volunteers. It has been a beautiful tournament. I don't know about you, but I am so ready for this game. <laughs> So. I am so excited. Since I saw the, the schedule, I, I know that this has been the game. So, Namura coming in with the highest ever WFTDA ranking of 159. And Sorry, 157. And Nantes are currently ranked in the WFTDA 153. So just four, and across the world ranking that is. In terms of European rankings, Nantes are currently at 27 and Namur at 29. It, it really couldn't be closer. It really couldn't. And uh, both teams had good performances, very similar scores put up yesterday against the Royal Army and Leeds. It was Namur who um, put up more points against the Royal Army, but it was Nantes who put up more um, points against Leeds so there is there's nothing you know what no. one has the other no. has so it is all going to come down to this game and everything that happens after these four seconds and if this is the first game you're tuning in today you've already missed the third fourth playoff which was a big upset with the Royal Swedish Army taking the win over Leeds go back and watch that on YouTube it was an amazing game that was purely belter that game was <laughs> and I'm not even from Newcastle out there right now you have got uh, B-Gaze is out jamming for 
the Namur team who are playing in blue right now. Bloody Cherry is out there and collecting lead in the green for Nantes. And it's so important, that first lead jam. Both teams are going to want to dominate these first few minutes to send a message. But B Gaze is also out of the pack, about half the lap behind. And uh, Nantes there with the, with the goat from Namur have held the pack and trying to save, uh, to make it as easy as possible. But the jam is forced to be called. And it is team points for both teams. And we do also have penalties for both teams. So there are two in the box from Namur. One in the box for Nantes, so we will start this mm -hmm. next jam as a three-on-two pack advantage for Nantes, and Adrenaline is on the line, going up against Crevator for Namur. And I think we did see points in the games yesterday where both teams did struggle with a large number of penalties, which just meant that they were lacking players on the track. So I think, you know, we really, both teams need to lock that down now and play clean games if they want to win. But I'll fair all credit to Namur there. If you can contain Adrenaline for 10 seconds with just two of you on track, you're doing well. But Crevator gets past those three non-blockers and is trying to close the gap. Adrenaline taps the hips furiously to try and deny Namur. It works well. And again, you know, we, we're seeing very short jams, as you'd expect at this stage. I mean, the teams have played each other before, you know, in the past, but it, it, they're still sounding each other out. And I think it's because they both really, really want to win. I mean, this is, this, you can just, you can almost smell it. <laughs> you can indeed. Uh, bragging rights on the line. Iron Duck is there, ready to jam for Nantes. Bat smash out there for Namur. It's three to Namur, eight to Nantes, and the pack goes nowhere. The penalty box empties for Namur. Iron Duck finds room, slaloms through, clean and calm to become your lead jammer. And that was a fantastic piece of positional blocking from her blocker up front, left that inside line wide open straight through. The star has been stashed by Bat Smash, who completes the initial now, but Iron Duck already in, already scoring, and there's just a nonchalance about Iron Duck's jamming that I absolutely adore. And I think definitely grown over the tournament, Iron Duck's jamming. I think, you know, if you look at the first game yesterday morning, there wasn't that, that nonchalance that, that I am absolutely on top of my game. Iron Duck having a fantastic tournament over the last two days. Nice, definitely. And we return to a familiar matchup going into this next jam. B-Gays versus Bloody Cherry on the line. The penalty box is empty, so... We are back to a full complement, and we're going with a split pack off the line. Pack will be up front. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> in goes Bloody Cherry, finds room on the inside, and that yields great results for Nott, who pick up lead once more. But, but, uh, but sorry, but B Gaze has made it out and is, is now approaching the pack to score points. Interesting to see if Nott will play it long. No, they don't. They uh, get the points, call the jam. Do. Picking up two and holding the mule scoreless. Three for the mule, 14 for Nantes right now, and you are down to about 26 minutes of the half to go. Uh, it looks like maybe one, no, there's an arm in there. Yeah, one of the non blockers is going to the box. So, and we're four minutes into the game, and I think we've probably seen six or seven penalties already. Uh, I think both teams will be looking to calm it down and, and you know that's probably that sort of tentative nerves at the start of the game. Absolutely get some of that nervous energy out and Crevator gets out of the pack lead, oh. spins off the momentum from the hit to claim first lead for Namur uh, in a couple of jams. Adrenaline denied lead jammer status which is unusual but yeah. Crevator is already in dancing on that toe, toe stop on the inside line. Hits the hips and denies Adrenaline any pass. And three points picked up by Namur, doubling their score to six. Important jam for Namur because Nantes was starting to build a bit of momentum. Even in just sort of two or three jams, you can sort of see that building. So great for Namur to hold it back and say, no, our game too. Absolutely. They are very much in it. It's three on three in the pack. So we are likely to see a very defensive start to this jam as Iron Duck and Bat Smash take the line. And you can see our two very distinct packs, uh, formation, defensive formations off the line. Both tripods immediately deployed to try and trap and contain those jammers. But on the outside, Bat Smash with furious legs, pumping away, driving the Nantes team right into turn one. Finding room, just trying to slip on through. There's a penalty called. 
It is a forearm on a non-blocker, and that work rate from Bat Smash was excellent. But also that one-on-one block, one -on -one blocking up front held back Bat Smash for an extra five or six seconds. It did indeed. But Nimura right now all over Iron Duck, and there goes number 89 taking the recycle. That's Pulp Eviction as Bat Smash completes a scoring pass. All the action up here in turn three right now. Iron Duck shown to the infield. And uh, Namil don't go back. They just release their pivot to play offense and maintain the tripod to hold Iron Duck. And what's interesting is that Namura playing Brulagom as pivot quite heavily in these first few jams. Brulagom usually a main rotation jammer. Um, and I think uh, Namura definitely trying to focus on defense. Um, and also having that option of a strong jammer in the pivot position. So we see the star pass now, and that is Barbie Rooster who takes the start out for Nantes, looking to force Bat Smash into the call off. Bat Smash coming in with Nimur holding at the back. They run away from Barbie Rooster, yeah. and the jam gets called. And that is an 8 nothing jam to Nimur, which brings us back to a tied game at 14 all. Tight, 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 <laughs> tight. Now, looking at the games earlier in the tournament, Nantes were playing 3 and one a lot of the time, and they were actually incredibly effective at offense um, and denying the other team's defense and just breaking it up. We've not seen that yet. They're both playing very heavily defensive games. They are indeed. And uh, that is reflected in our scoreline right now. 14 points put up by both teams. You've got B-Gaze out there for Namur. Uh, and his bloody cherry out there jamming for Nantes. And it is Namur up front. One to beat. Gets through. But I tell you what, bloody cherry is hot on the heels of B-Gaze. It is a race in the pack and between the jammers right now. We've done a complete lap. Everybody just assessing their options and the directions come in to speed the pack up and run away. It's a sensible strategy. That was fast. That was indeed fast, but not fast enough to stop the Namur Jammer from grabbing two points. Just checking the points on the board. There's the second point on the board. So it's 16 points to Namur, 14 to Nantes. Eight minutes gone and we've still got 30 points on the board total. That is it. This momentum, is a pendulum is not going to go nowhere. It isn't. And change that. Here there is three points for Namur put up. Two by Nantes at the end of that jam. 16 at play 17 with exactly 22 minutes on the clock. We've got Adrenalines on the line for Nantes. Uh, we have Crevator on the line for Namur. It is a pack advantage for Namur as we head into this next jam. And Crevator is out front and trying to take advantage of that. The energy from Crevator is fantastic. Nantes penalty trouble though, losing a second blocker to the box. And that does make life just a little easier for Crevator, who enjoys the home support here on the exit of the pack. More whistles in the pack, it's a multiplayer for Namur. And oh my days, Crevator comes through completely unopposed to pick up four points for Namur, who are now five points ahead of Nantes. Adrenaline is being held very hard in the back. And Adrenaline's patient jammer, just resting on that tripod, looking to assess options, uh, is a jammer who knows when to put the efficiency and the acceleration on even. Here comes the gap, there goes Adrenaline's but that was a great deny by Blue Velvet from Namur there. Namur have given up the power jam, Crevator in the box, so Adrenaline's now with full offensive support available, tackles the Namur tripod, gets through, completes the initial. Adrenaline's having jammed pretty much every game uh, in this tournament. Crevator was saved for the last, from the last game yesterday, so probably has a bit more energy in the legs, and I think that may tell towards the end of this game. I think you're absolutely right. Crevator is back out, and that was a good penalty kill there by Namur. Uh, didn't concede any points in that power jam. So really nice done. And Crevator rolling round the back of a blocker there. That was skills for days. Loved it. Eight points on the board for the mirror.
Okay, so we do have Crebator on the outside line, avoids all the bottoms coming their way to pick up the final point. 12 points put up, but Nantes do grab four, and it's a nine point game now. 20 to Nantes, 29 to the Muir with under 20 minutes to go. So those of you who have been joining us all weekend will know that 20 points is the highest jam we've had so far today. Pixie Knuckle Dust managed that in the game earlier, which was between Leeds and the Royal Army. But back on track right now, we have Iron Duck versus Bat Smash. One in the box for Nantes, and that allows the Mirror and Bat Smash to come away with lead jammer status. And I think that was definitely not not able to hold back Bat Smash. That I think at the front they just let Bat Smash through a bit easier than I was expecting. Indeed, Bat Smash has had um, some quite good luck actually coming into the games. Did well yesterday as well. It was a great addition to the jamming rotation. But Iron Duck is doing battle with a two wall at the back. The offense comes in. But Iron Duck not getting any joy, and of course, as I say that, finds the room, slaloms out. So not losing a blocker to the box, and there's one each in there for both teams, which means we lose the offensive player option. Jam comes to an end, and it is a full scoring pass for Namur, who puts up four unanswered points. And this is Namur now, you know, jam by jam, four points by four points, trying to establish that lead. Um, you know, it's it's still early even in the first half, but that's a that's a powerful message because Roland Zabi is about momentum, and it's about having that sort of you know that position. Even if the other team can only hold you to one scoring pass, if you do it time after time after time, it starts sending that message we're in control. Yeah, it doesn't have to be an artery for it to be a bleed that can kill you. That is for sure. And Namur looking to put a death of a thousand paper cuts on Nant right here in this opening half. We're just having a, a team a time out, and it's a chance to remind you that although this is the gold medal game, there is another game that is going to be played this weekend because we want to showcase exciting roller derby in Belgium and it's going to be Le Papin versus Beastie Roller Derby. I'm really glad you said that because uh, Toxic Lady and I, I, I attempted my French pronunciation <laughs> earlier. And, and I think we both heartily apologise to the entire French speaking audience. I absolutely do. I apologise for my boucherie <laughs> of your language. <laughs> As demonstrated right there. Yeah. So, but, you know, it's a great weekend of, of, you know, roller derby from all over Europe, but really good to see a Belgian game at the end of this tournament. Absolutely. A lovely, I love an insight into another country's roller derby setup and who's up and coming and what the style of play is. And that's the yeah. great thing about Euro derby uh, is that we watch across the pond. And then we take it away and we do our own thing with it. And I love to see what you guys come up with. So we're ready, though. Back to the action. You've got Big A's going up against Bloody Cherry. This matchup has continued throughout the first half. And both jammers do not have the offensive player available. It's three deep at the moment. But as I say, that number 666 comes back in. That's left for dead for Namur. But and that's a big hit out and recycle just as Bloody Cherry thought that they were out. There is penalty trouble galore in this game. As clean as the, the first game of today was, this looks like it's penalty opposite right now. B Gays, though, has collected Lee Jammer status for Namur. Bloody Cherry pushing out front has just two Namur blockers ahead, but the pack has reformed around them, but gets out. It is that that is quite the trio of blockers out there at the moment, but they're down to two now. Uh, Tinker and uh, Grumpy and up doing an excellent job out there. But and as you say, it's been very penalty heavy. We have three blockers in the box: two from Nantes, one from Namur. And at any given time, you look over and the box has got people in it. It is, and that massively affects the game. We're all yeah. seeing it. That you lose one blocker, you lose your offensive option. 3D and 1-0 is the bare minimum you need right now to be able to spring these jammers in such a defensive focused game. Mm. And that's why we're seeing such low scores because there's no offense, so it's just a defense game because of the penalties. It is adrenaline's looking for space, hit, gets the hit from Brulegon but manages to stay inbound, collects yep. lead for Nantes. 
and we wonder if the momentum pendulum starts to swing back the other way now. So Adrenalins yeah. comes in on a scoring pass. And Adrenalins is such a fantastically physical blocker that she can just push through walls absolutely but it's the it's the patience i enjoy they're holding on at the back of a wall and waiting for those options to come available no, very efficient jammer oh there is a high block call on adrenaline so this is a power jam now at the same time we've had the star pass from crevator over to brula gom two very capable jammers whichever one's wearing the star but i think it's very interesting tactics as we talked about before that brula gom is playing a pivot position mm -hmm. and, and crevator is on because crevator is a, is a physical jammer brula gom is more agile mm. um and you know very much on on her toe stops so as a pivot is, a, is an interesting choice. So either that they're looking for that ability to have a backup jammer that they absolutely know can do the job, or it's that they're um, thinking that they're going to be close behind Namur, uh, no, sorry, and want to be able to pass the star. Absolutely, or it could even be as simple as putting out a really energetic jammer like Crabateur, who uses the full width of the track, very lateral, just to really tire out those non blockers yeah. in the early days. Yeah. Um, there's a variety of options as to why you would do this, but it is all happening in the pack right now. Both teams are down a blocker, and in fact, not lose another, so they're down to two, and that allows Brulagom just to slip through on the inside, completing a second scoring pass. Eight unanswered points. Adrenaline's looking to amend that. And Adrenaline able to push off that. I believe that is actually Crevator also in the pack. It is indeed. It is. So yeah. there's some very... Oh, well, actually, it would have been, obviously, because Crevator was the jammer. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. But still, the blocking is fantastic from yeah. these double threats that are out on track right now. Your scores on the board, 24 to none, 49 to Namur. And that is your first half. Mm. First half of the first half done. Yeah, 25% in. And that 12-point jam, is, is that the largest scoring jam we've seen this game? I believe it absolutely yeah. is. Um, and it just shows how completely tight this game is. Official review having been called, I believe, by Nantes. Sorry, by Namur. Um, so while we're in that official review, just a chance to talk about the game so far. I mean, it, it's been strategically fascinating. It has. Um, it's pe penalties right now. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> You got to keep your folks out of the box, yep. you know, yep. on track where they can do something. Because if Nantes are going to bring out that amazing offense, then they need to have one to have as you, an offense. You've got to have that one. To the yep. moment, the moment we see three uh, blockers on yep. track, you know. It's War of the Worlds time, the tripods yep. are out, you know, humans are getting liquefied, <laughs> there's nothing else you can do. Yeah. And it isn't until that blocker comes out of the box, and it also sometimes depends, is that blocker your offensive player? Yep. Can they come out of the box and immediately have an impact? Or yep. do they have to fit back into the tripod and release your most effective offensive yeah. blocker? Yeah. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I think the story of this first half is very defensive, very heavy, very physical, but also very penalty heavy. And, you know, if it carries on at this rate, we are going to see foul outs. Yes. And that is going to fundamentally change the game because, you know, each team will have their, their power lineups. Yeah. And they'll be the ones, you know, most at risk of fouling out. It is. And, you know, there, there is, a, like I said, it's a very physical game. Um, and the problem is they're taking risks. Yeah. You know, when you want to win and you yeah. want it bad, you are going to take that risk. Yep. You are going to push that little extra. Um, yep. And that doesn't always go in your favor sometimes. So it will be about who can maintain their composure and their focus throughout this game. Yep. Because yesterday was a relatively easy day for both teams, yes. if we're honest. Yep. You know, Namur beat Royal Army 252-67, uh, to 67, um, and they beat Leeds 165-122. Uh, to 122. That was not an easy game. It was not, not Leeds. That was not an easy game. Leeds put up an, a, a hell of a fight in that game. It was a phenomenal game to watch. Again, go back. All of the games this weekend have been interesting, exciting. That that Leeds uh, game, that we described that as a roller coaster. It 
It really was. I mean, you do you do need to indulge yourself. Yeah. Treat yourself. <laughs> Treat yourself. To day one of Skate Around 3. Um, not though, um, not putting up as many points against uh, lead. Oh, actually, sorry, that's a lie. They put up slightly more points against lead, um, and they held lead slightly lower on the score as well. Nant came away from that one, 173 to lead 80. Um, but then they <laughs> put on a number of points against the Royal Army, which was 204 to 81. So nobody is sticking to the script this nope. weekend. No, nope. we didn't well, And as we said earlier, the third, fourth game that's just been on uh, went against predictions with the Royal Army taking the win. And, and that was because there was, uh, you could see the Royal Army grow over the, even just a day, just in two games. It yeah. was phenomenal to watch. And, the, and this morning's game was just, oh, it, it was, you know. It was breathtaking at points. Yeah. It really was. Uh, there was nothing between them. No. Um, and as I, I mean, I was, I was a little bit of a critic yesterday of the Royal Army. They have a really opening strong 10 minutes, as I've yeah. said before. They have a really strong closing 10 minutes. But it, it, the middle can be a bit iffy. But they mm. took their notes from yesterday. They, they took yep. their corrections and they applied them and it yielded dividends for them. And that's what happened. It was in the last 10 minutes. It was actually with uh, four minutes to go. They had a 20-point jam and that sealed the game for them. So, that again, that strong last 10 minutes. But today, they sorted out the middle. This game still, I know the score doesn't look like it, really feels it could still go either way. Yeah, that hangs in a balance. I mean, that is, that's two, that's two big, two jams yeah. um, to equal, you know, that score really. And we've still got 44 minutes left in this game, so. So much time, so yeah. much time to see all of this happen. This these is quite the yeah. official review yeah. going on here. But these two teams last played each other in April, and it was Nantes that came away with the win. So if you look at the rankings, you would say that Nantes would win, but we checked out flat track stats before we came here. Got and some opinions, flat track stats, have yeah, they? they? They were predicting that Namur will take the win, and I think that's a combination of home track advantage, but also, you know, just having achieved the highest ever WFTDA ranking, clearly on and up, clearly things are coming together and gelling for them so interesting to see how it will go right no change on points no change on personnel in the box so i am going to conclude that everything is as it was prior to the official review yes uh, and the official review was lost so there we go and we have iron duck versus a bat smash and nobody is allowed past the jam line that's, that's what the blockers have decided. Oh, they've let them now. They've let them now. <laughs> but they're not letting them pass the pivot line. Again, we're seeing that, you know, three-wall for defensive formation. Both teams are only able to do that until now. Number 53, Buzz, has come back on the track for Nantes. And Buzz has been a real game-changer in these games for Nantes. Uh, alongside the captain, Dead, great yeah. pivot and blockers. Uh, really enjoyed seeing their contribution to the pack. But look at Iron Duck taking on number 89, Pulp Eviction. The slow oh. grind. But look at Pulp Eviction. Able to hold back Iron Duck for easily six or seven seconds. I would like somebody to put hearts in my eyes because I <laughs> love that. And I am a living emoji right now. But Iron Duck is back in on a scoring pass. Bat Smash desperately trying to finish the initial, but none are staying in front. And we are all, like, Bat Smash is on the crowd straight away and being tipped to the infield. Somehow, the core strength of a genius stays up right and inbound and not lose a blocker two left for bat smash to battle against but they settle into a really strong wall but both jammers had to push physically push almost an entire lap until iron duck finally um gets that scoring pass and there is a star pass by namur rust in pieces taking the star there um, but is now enjoying the sad place like a timeshare situation Uh, Iron Duck is on a second scoring pass, but is also dealing with a tripod of their own. Uh, you get a tripod, you get a tripod, everybody gets a tripod. And it is again the offence that was Mad Giver trying to break up the wall. 
not able to do that and that jam comes to an end but that was one of the hardest grinding uh, jams for jammers I've seen in a long time it was but Iron Duck did brilliantly came on away with all eight points and bringing Nantes up to 32 Namur on 49 so just 17 points between the two teams 12 minutes left in this half this one's going to the wire I yeah. feel it I yeah. feel it in my derby bones. <laughs> so we're back to Bloody Cherry versus B Gaze. Empty penalty box. Mad pack at the pivot line and a pace explodes as we head into turn three. The drive from B Gaze really catching Nod off guard there. But the speed of the non blockers to reform ahead of B Gaze is phenomenal. But she pushes them out of play and picks up Lee Jammer. That was great work from Nemesis there. They're just chasing out, not giving up until they absolutely have to. Bloody Cherry stashed to start, completes the initial now, but B Gaze is in, trying to grab points. One go into the box for Nantes. So interesting to see how B Gaze and B Gaze calls the jam. Yeah, I was about to say, interesting to see whether they play the jam long and then the jam go called. Yeah, there were hands ready, poised above hips. And that was a three-point grab by Namur. It's a 20-point game now. We're into the final 10 minutes of this first period. And, oh, it's been a beaut so far. But I am I am definitely going to check out those penalty tallies oh, at yes. half-time. But we have a pivot line start, at least, on the lineup. Adrenaline's on the line against Crevator. Namur with the pack advantage. Crevator looking on the outside to find oh. that. Gets lead, but gets a back block, so therefore loses lead. We are going to have a two-minute jam. I think it's something I've seen throughout the tournament. Nantes don't block to the line, and that does let people through for lead. It does indeed. So I take it back. That penalty was picked up before Crevator was assessed as lead, and so therefore Adrenaline's able to gain control of the jam for Nantes. And, we, and we've seen such dynamic packs and walling the need to really look at zone blocking if you're going to try and keep up across the whole pack. Adrenaline's not sure if that penalty was or that communication from the refs was for her, but has decided to carry on anyway. Just takes a moment, assesses options, oh, just catches a skate there, falls down, but back up and ready to push. But we again, we see Adrenaline's who's just just biding her time, waiting for that opening, looking. Crevator on again jamming, but again Brulegom is the pivot. There was, there was an attempt at a star pass, but Crevator has decided to carry on. But again, we're seeing that Brulegom crevator line um, matchup. Again, trying to pass the star, but Crevator is out. Sometimes just a dummy of the star pass yeah. is enough to buy you that gap to get on through. But Buzz is in the pivot for the non. Uh, pivot for non is in the box alongside Adrenaline's now. It's Grebator with uh, a power jam and 20 seconds left on the jam clock. And only three non-blockers on track, but also only three Namur blockers on track. Indeed, uh, Buzz did pick up a four up for that huge push out on Grebator uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, but Crevator in now on a second scoring pass, gets room on the outside and bags all eight points. So answering Nantes eight point jam with one of their own. There are times I want to go on track and just push the Nantes blockers just that little bit further towards the line mm -hmm. because they're pushing to the line but not over it. Yeah. And that's enabling the agility of the Namur blockers to get, uh, jammers, sorry, to get round. I mean, you give these jammers a millimetre and they'll yep. take lead on you. They yep. absolutely will. Um, so it's 36 to Nantes place, 60 to Namur, and Namur are taking a team time out. Which surprises me a little, I'm not going to lie. Um, but then I'm not a bench coach and I am not privy to their secret strategies. No, and, and we've seen Doppler use all sorts of strategies and tactics in this first game. We'd love to be hearing what they're talking about. Uh, but when sometimes then with eight minutes ago, also a bit of a breather. I mean, yeah. this has been a, such a physical game that sometimes you just want to have a have that break. And also, if if tempers are getting a bit heated or you know emotions are getting a bit heightened, sometimes it's a chance to just refocus on what you're trying to do. Sometimes that's what you use a timeout for. 
bring everybody back into the moment. Our oh. hands are going in. Maybe they just wanted a charm. Sometimes you just want to get together with your team and have a little charm. Maybe they're deciding what they're going to eat after the game. I mean, if it's not pizza, I don't want to know them. There's an amazing bagel van here. If you are oh. not at this tournament, you are missing out on bagels. Missing out. Fact. Factual this facts. This is why I'm here, second year in a row. It's for the bagels. I mean, and, and maybe for the derby. I mean, the derby's all right in it, but the bagels are amazing. <laughs> so uh, we have adrenaline in the box at the start of this next jam. We have Bruno Gorm donning the start from the get-go this time. For the time. first time in this game. And it's an interesting decision, especially as Namiya have two in the box. One is standing, but two are in there. And so not have this initial pack advantage. Maybe they've decided to go for the agility that Brulagon brings. But I also found Brulagon to be a very clean jammer, yep. very, very consistent, and so maybe that's a, it's a safe pair of hands. Adrenaline is uh, swinging around with that triangle at the back of the pack there, but getting no progress. And Brulagon out for lead, but that took 20 seconds of that penalty. It did indeed. Adrenaline is still working at the back now, uh, hoping for the offense. But of course, Namur only down to three blockers. That makes life a little, sorry, not down to three blockers. It makes it a little difficult. Rust in pieces all over the track to try and hold back Adrenaline's. Yeah, Death, Rust in pieces and Tinker were fabulous uh, yesterday for Namur. Really yeah. enjoyed their performances. Let's have a look at the scores at the end of that jam. And Namur put up another four points unanswered by Nantes. 36 to Nantes, 64 to Mio, seven minutes to go. So Nantes have seven minutes to try and change this dynamic going into half time. Because if Namio keep with this momentum and this, you know, four points, eight points, they're going to build a lead that is going to feel fairly unassailable at half time. But it is now a team timeout from Nantes. Bearing in mind what I just said, it shouldn't be a huge surprise that they called a team timeout. I feel like they were listening to you. They were like, you know what? Yeah. We need to have a plan of attack for the final moment of this second half. Oh, it's actually an official review, Ooh. not a team timeout. Oh, we're all in the middle. Yeah. And we're just going to have a little look and see what happens. But incredible European derby on display here at the Skate Around 3 tournament. And we are in Pereff. Yes. Yeah, we're not far from Namur in lovely Belgium. And Namur roller girls know how to put on a tournament. This is the third time that they've held skate around and it is just lovely atmosphere, great bagels. The team just do everything to make this to be a great experience for you. Huge thank you to the production team who are also some of the coaching team. So they have multiple jobs and the fact that we can stream this for you is entirely down to the amazing Namur roller girls. So as you sit there at home, relax yep. on your sofa with your beverage of choice in hand. Just a little nod to our production team who allow you to see this for free. I know. For free. For free. It's amazing. So our alt is just delivering the news. So we're gonna I'm gonna earwig on okay. the house and find out what our official review is about for you. So while we're just doing that, just a reminder that the next game is going to be on at 4 p.m. Um, Central European time, or if you have been following Leeds in this tournament and you're in the UK, that is 3 p.m. And, uh, you know, this, this journey doesn't end, even though this is the gold medal match. So we're underway again. It is B-Gays for Namur up against Bloody Cherry for Nantes. And the official review. The official review was looking for a penalty on the jammer. It was denied. So both teams have lost their official reviews in this half, and we still have six and a half minutes to go. B-Gays has lead jammer status. Bloody Cherry has half a lap to make up. Namur lost one to the box in that melee. And into the pack first is B-Gays. He's tapping their hips as Bloody Cherry comes in, doesn't grab any points, and it is three picked up by Namur. I don't know. Okay. 36 plays 67, six minutes and 16 seconds on the clock in what is the final game of this tournament. We do have a wonderful exhibition match of yes. Belgian roller derby this afternoon. I, I talked about it during the official review, saying it's at 4 p.m. and 3 p.m. if you're in the UK. Look at you with timings as well. Well, 10 a.m. if you're in the U.S. on the Eastern Coast. Hey, we are full of information for you here today. Uh, but I tell you what, full of beans is Crevator jamming with an energy that I could only hope to have this time on a Sunday morning. 
And I think that's definitely because Crevatore was rested from the last game yesterday. It's a power jam. Adrenaline, who played so clean yesterday, is now in the penalty box. Uh, is a, it's a big, I thought for a moment there, that Crevator might be on their way as well, but it was a huge recycle. Tries to jump the apex, shut down. Nimio um, able though to close the gate and stop the huge recycle. But Crevator's energy, you know, we are one minute, uh, so almost one minute into this jam. And just that, able to cover the whole track quicker than two blockers to get round. But good penalty kill because Crevator were only able to come up with lead, no point. And Adrenaline picks a sweet line up the inside to complete the initial. Penalty box empties. And Crevator steals four points before the jam comes to an end. So since that official review, we've had two jams and Amir putting on four points in each of those jams, starting to build that lead, taking the control of the game. Tinker is off to the penalty box and seemed very, really unhappy about that situation. <laughs> very pantomime arms oh, going it on. it was a leg block as well. Ah, there was, there was a very pantomime... Oh no, <laughs> um, I really quite enjoyed that. Uh, it was definitely not insubordination, but it was definitely an expression. Uh, that's for sure. Iron Duck is out jamming against Rulagom, who has joined the jammer rotation now. Yep. Rulagom having a successful first jam, but now stuck behind that wall of three at the back, and it's Iron Duck pushing out up front with some offense. And Brunagom decides to dig in to that tripod and drive it forward. Up front, taking a shirt whip. Stays oh. in bounce somehow. Defying the laws of physics and gravity. Please keep your arms and legs inside the track at all times. And <laughs> Iron Duck is riding this all the way to a scoring pass now. Tinker has taken the start for Namur. Was just unceremoniously dumped on the inside. Tries to go around the outside, was hanging on to shirts, but ah yes, I saw toe stops hanging out at the edge of the track and Tinker is in the box now for the mule on a power jam for not. So that's the second trip in the space of two minutes for Tinker and again I think you know when it comes to the second half of the game the penalties are gonna start playing a role. So Iron Duck puts four on the board, brings Nantes back within 31 points of Namur. This second pass is coming in now and Namur looking to stay ahead of the offense and of course Iron Duck. Iron Duck's looking for room on the inside line, swings some hips round, taps, freezes the jammer in the box for Namur and gives gives not a power jam start. And this is what we've been looking for. This is what we've been wanting from Nantes. You know, put, putting the points on and starting with a power start. Even just that can change the dynamics and sort of bring Nantes back into the game because Namur have shut them out for the last four or five jams. They needed to change that up and that's been really pleasant to see. So it is Bloody Cherry who gets the honor of the power jam start. The pack stays up front. There's a split in the pack and it does stretch things out. Back smashes the last line of defense. And Bloody Cherry is through for lead for none. The penalty box is empty. Tinker is back out now wearing the star for Namur. But Tinker's work rate is phenomenal. Um, just the energy again. These Namur jammers are just full of springs, electricity. Whatever all, it is. All of it. They've got it all. But Bloody Cherry has got the outside line and comes through collecting all four points. So not pull themselves up to 47. Namur holding on 90, sorry, sorry, 71. Tinker getting no joy on that far crowd straight away. But that's beautiful work from Bloody Cherry keeping in on the outside. Namur not able to push her out on that outside edge. Not closing this game down to 20 points. They put up 15 in the last two jams and Bloody Cherry sails through on the inside. The Titanic could have got up that inside line. Well, because you have four Nantes blockers and only two Namur blockers. Lovely screening and here it oh. comes again, but Bat yeah. Smash manages to shake off. They but in comes the offense, 44 and 42, doing the business. And one blocker causing chaos out there. It's bat smash. smash. Ab uh, bat smashing. Bat smashing. Quite right. Bloody Cherry says, yeah, that'll do. And they freeze. 
they freeze Tika in the box, who is on my pantomime villain jammer right now. <laughs> there are arms on hips. There's an exasperation on the face. I can hear the sigh from over here. Oh, I kind of love it. I, you know, I want to see these players playing the game and feeling it as well, but not picking themselves up at 59. Tinka can't even look at the track right there. I just can't even. <laughs> uh, as Nant did put up 16 unanswered points in that last jam. Thing brings them to 59. Adrenaline is out. And on the inside, stepping through. That was beautiful moves there from Adrenaline. Lead goes to Nant. There are just no seconds on the period no. clock. One minute 42 and four points in the pocket of Adrenalines. And what a comeback from Nantes in these last three oh. jams. Sign me up, Belgium. I am loving this business. Adrenalines in on a second scoring pass. Finds the room, gets on through, taps the hips. We go into wow. half time and it's going to be a four point game. And three, four minutes ago, it was like a 30-point game. And that's just phenomenal. And that's going to give Nantes such a high going into halftime. And it hopefully means that they will come out and, and this game is on. This oh. game is on. It is on like Donkey Kong here in Floreff at the Skate Around 3 tournament. I need a break. But we've Ooh. got another 30 minutes of this. We'll be back in about 14 minutes. I've been Dot Mistress. I've been Riggs. See you very shortly. And welcome back to Skate Around 3. You are joining us for Namur versus Nantes. And if you weren't here for the first half, where were you? It was a fantastic game. First half of that game, thrills, spills, lead changes, everything in this game. And with Nantes coming back in the last three jams, closing down a 30-point gap, it's all about who comes out on fire in this first sort of five minutes after the halftime, I think could decide the game. I tell you what will decide the game. Who stays out of that penalty box? Yes, it's been a game of penalties. It really has. And they have absolutely affected the gameplay of both of these teams. Strongly reliant upon the offense that they put in to free their jammers. Uh, and so that that's just having such an impact. I mean, we usually say if you go into half time and you haven't reached 100 points, it's a tight defensive game. Neither team having reached 100 points, barely over 100 points across the two teams, shows how it's all about defense because the penalty box is too full for offense. And it, at one point, Namur looked like they were set, that they'd set the direction of the game, but then Nantes with that roaring charge back in the last three jams was just phenomenal. And the stage is set for the final tournament game of Skater Round 3. The gold medal is on the line. There's a lovely trophy to be taken away. So it's not just do you want a medal. Both teams will get medals. It's do you want a gold medal. Do you want a trophy for your cabinet too? It's Adrenaline's on the line going up against B-Gates. This is a new jammer matchup we're seeing in this second half. And Bigates digs straight into the tripod whilst Numira are able to hit off Adrenalines both the inside and the outside. But Adrenalines now head down, making the charge, and Numira cannot keep the, the pack together. And Adrenaline's able to push out up front for lead jammer. Namur not able to keep a wall enough up front, so it was one on one blocking the whole way. And not making their intentions very clear here in this opening jam. Oh, big hit. Somebody's been watching champs. That was Blackman-esque. I mean, there's a penalty call. Yep, and 14 picking up the penalty, but that did eat up five seconds. It did not have picked up four points with Adrenaline's. Uh, they're looking and they're like, no, nope, don't call it. The adrenaline is like, why shouldn't I call it? Because your pivot and your blocker are in the box and a queue has formed for yeah. Nantes right now. And so adrenaline is the well, there's only one blocker to help me. And as you say, it's all about clearing the box now for Nantes. And the Mule trying to speed up the pack and the single blocker trying to slow that down. But adrenaline's Adrenaline's managed to sneak through almost unnoticed. Namur going so fast, they didn't form a wall. Just, we're just doing laps right now. Big yeah. with one blocker to beat. Easily round 
Uh, it is an eight all jam right now, but Adrenaline's half a lap lead and not losing uh, that third blocker to the box now, who was in a queuing system. But at least it's now only one blocker in the box, and so Adrenaline gets, Adrenaline gets the call, calls the jam. I'm just waiting to see what that impact of that last pass was. So I think the refs just can confer, Jam Ref just conferring on points. And let me just tell you about our refs today for this amazing game because we haven't mentioned them yet. We've got Wonder Zebra, Dildo, Temer, Gutier, Gins, Simply the Beast, Obey, Jan Kenobi, and Twixie. Been doing a fantastic job as our referees in their stripes today. But back on track, it's Iron Duck versus Crevator. Crevator finds room on the outside, gets round, but. Oh, Crevator did still lead first, but Iron Duck is winning the foot race. Yep. Taps get. And in that tapped. last jam, Nantes did put on one more point than Namur, so the gap has closed to three points. That jam, obviously, no points for either team. Iron Duck forcing that call off as a piece of genius. Absolutely. And uh, as we like to say on the continent, nil pois. <laughs> Mil poix, like a British entry to the Eurovision. But hoping not to come away with Neil Poir are oh, Bat Smash and Bloody Cherry, who are out jamming right now. It's pack advantage for Namur, and they do send the offensive support of number 382 in there. That's Rust in Pieces, who, alongside Tinker, has been quite the pivot for Namur. But Namur come away with lead, and Bat Smash very happy with their work right there. Bloody Cherry getting recycled though, and that's number 89, Pulp Eviction, yet again, one-on-one -on -one blocking. I don't need the rest of my team. <laughs> but you do get a penalty for it, and sometimes it's worth it, in my humble opinion. <laughs> there are times. But it's still tough. Tripods, we have a lead. But yeah. it's it's... It's taken time, just that second pass for Bat Smash has taken probably 30 seconds. Really earned all four of those points, but Bloody Cherry completes the initial. He's also in on a scoring pass. Bat Smash looking for instruction, and I think Nant might have picked up a point there. I think they sneaked two. Two. Two snicker points like a ninja. Bloody Cherry in and stealing points there. Uh, and it is 78 to Nant plates, 83 to Namur. And we did see this when when Namur were in control of the game in the first half. It was single pass, single pass, double pass, single pass. And we're starting to see that. So Nant are doing incredibly well to stop that being just, you know, those single passes in this game, in this jam, just two points. Absolutely. But, and so not letting them get too far away, but we're going to want to see that dynamic change. And we see our very familiar sight in front of us. But look at the space Nod took up from B Gaze there, dropping at least 10 foot back and out front, jumping blockers on the outside. Adrenaline to collect lead for Nod. I feel a lead change coming on. <laughs> I feel it. Let's hope that's not a commentator's curse as we see Adrenaline's coming in to re-engage. Greenbergen is in there offering the offense. Adrenaline stretching out that pack. Just two blockers and gets round picking up the full four points for Nantes. So it is now a one point game. And Grumpy there was just getting dropped but has now come back, picked up the star. Uh, not. Yes, illegal star pass. Everybody was very confused. Uh, we're just taking a moment right now, but continuing on is Grumpy. So we were just watching the ref communication, but that has been given as a legal star pass. We're just going to have a little confer now, just yeah. to make sure everything's all right at the end of that jam and yeah. everything is as it should be. <laughs> Our wonderful ref and crew just into that discussion right now. And so, while we talked about the refs, the NSOs are Halo Jones, G.I. Joanna, Law Have Mercy, AC Daisy, Blanche Fess, Dr. Evil, No Wheel Strongbottom, Dr. Disaster, Kaon Bunga, Champier Patin, Mumu, and Alpen Yeti. A cracking crew of officials and refs we've had with us this weekend. And some cracking jammers out on track right now. Iron Duck versus Crevator. It's 82 plays 83. You're under 24 minutes left of the game to decide gold medal. Crevator is going for it. Denied by none. Being recycled comes in. That is number 25, Barbie Roost. And Iron Duck gets through for lead for none. And I think that lead change you've been jonesing for is about to happen. Iron Duck out 
on a scoring pass, looking to deliver that for Nom right now. Namira battling hard, but Nom seem to have been getting the number of these jammers a little in this second half. Uh, as we're saying, we're keeping the points right down. Offense is going in from Namira, but it's having very little effect. Yeah, and it is that three wall of, of Nantes up front, which is just absolutely holding back. Bruno Gomez hovering yeah. and looking for that star pass, but Nantes with a huge recycle all the way back oh, to the edge of the turn one. That is half the track. Meanwhile, Iron Duck now pushing out up front. But again, Namur almost gave up, went, oh, too far. Yeah, way before the 20 foot engagement zone. Absolutely, you need to chase that down all the way. You play to the whistle, you play past the line, and that is those minuscule differences are what's going on. Bruno Gomez yeah. has taken the star for Nou, Namur, and is out of the pack, looking to force the call off, but Iron Duck, eyes on the bench. They but Iron, they Iron Duck having done two scoring passes now, so we have that lead change. And they protect their point, locking out Namur in that jam. It did cost them a blocker in the box, Nantes, but it's worth it. Absolutely worth it. 90 points now for Nantes. 83 points for Namur. Oof. Love it. Lead 20, change. 22 minutes left in this game. To put it in perspective, just six months ago, the two teams met in April, a little more than six months ago. Namur scored 130 and Nantes scored 173. It's not going to be that big a difference, whichever way it goes. It really isn't, and it is a pack advantage for Namur right now, and they are using that to take Bloody Cherry back on the jam straight away, but up front, pushing so hard, it's Bat Smash. Bat Smash gets lead, and Bat Smash has had a very successful weekend. Really consistent jamming out there, and not with penalty trouble uh, accumulated, another blocker going in. And it's just those two non-blockers up front and unable to hold back Bat Smash. I think having seen Bat Smash earlier this year, I think the big difference for me is the physicality. Be oh. able to push through walls has really come on in the last few months for Bat Smash. So we are back in on a second scoring pack with, pass with Bat Smash, who calls the jam off. A uh, little tap of the forearm. Little. Wanted a penalty, didn't get one called. So Bat Smash knowing what it's like to want. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord, but that was seven points for Namur in that game. Jam. Can so you taste it? It, it is tasty derby time. It is a tied game with 20 minutes 43 seconds left on the clock. <sighs> Kravator is going up against Adrenalines. The pivot for Namur is in the box. One standing for Nod. Now re-entering the track. All uh, the blockers blocking like their actual lives depend on it. But the ferocity of Adrenalines is really breaking at the Namur wall. And out comes Adrenalines with lead. Namur um, pivot is still in the box, standing now, but we do see not losing one as well. As we see on the outside, Crevator complete the initial with some great footwork. And that's some beautiful offense from Nantes freeing up the inside line for Adrenalines. That was textbook. And I'm loving watching the bench of Nantes just run every second they can off the clock at every available opportunity. They take their four points and they wait. Oof. So now Nantes now in the lead, 94 points to 90. So we have seen a little bit of a change in the Jammer matchups, and I do think that is yielding a greater result for mm. Nantes right now. Yeah. Um, whether it's the change of lineup who are defending or whether it is you know just that jammer mismatch that we're getting it's very interesting as Iron Duck edges down the outside Bigay switches to the outside uh, oh there's a call for a cut I think it's gonna get given it may not know it was all fine it was a forearms penalty higher up the pack that was that whistle blow I couldn't take my eyes off the knob jammer and I shouldn't have done that because Bigay has come through taken lead for Namur but Iron Duck also out because the pack speeding up broke it up enough for Iron Duck to just skate through and I'm just watching Doppler the, the uh, coach for Namur dance around the box and try and give all that energy but look at the pack speed I mean you need to fall you need to fall small there as Namur get dropped 
Let's see how it all shakes out. Two picked up by none. I'm looking. I'm waiting for the wait, jam wait. ref. It is it's two. two. Two for two. Oh. You're going to hear that noise a lot over the next few minutes from me. It is, it is exactly the appropriate noise for a game of this intensity and this level of tightness. We've been playing for 40 minutes and there's not even 200 points on the board across both teams. Neither team breaking 100 points in 40 minutes. These guys are out to defend with everything they've got. If we were playing football, they'd have, we'd be talking about people parking the bus right now. <laughs> and Juddy Jerry is pushing against that metaphorical bus right oh. now and it looks like the handbrake is on people it does not want to get to that pivot line but bat smash having no more joy up front lockdown containment is the name of this jam 30 seconds are almost elapsed and we have only made it to the exit of turn one and we only got there through the sheer willpower and dedication of the legs of those jammers and this is where you can see how bat smash is really developing that strength actually pushed her way into lead and yet came out there looking very calm very relaxed and just doing up her wrist guard how do you do that but bloody cherry also out as we have more blockers we now have four blockers in the penalty box we've, down to three we've got as many on the box uh, in the box as we have on the track and that is never a good situation that i believe takes us back to a tied game that was four points for namur take them to 96 96 pace 96. Place your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. Who slaps the century first? That's what we need to know. Who's <laughs> going to get the 100 points in first? I don't know how you're coping with this at home. <laughs> I'm not coping with this right here in the venue. And we have a pivot line set up. It's lies. Uh, it's yeah. not lies. It is it's, lies. It's <laughs> you can't trust these lies, oh, but you can wow. trust Brevator to do the business. And the, the volume in the venue just went up. The volume in the penalty box is as high. Capacity has been reached in the penalty box. We hit nine penalties in a jam yesterday. I feel like we may have broken that record today. So not with the jammer and two blockers in the box is making it easy work for Crevator, who is now on second scoring pass. Greenbergen, amazing hit out, but got the forearm call and joins the rest of Nod in the box. There must be something about the box. Have they got cookies? I mean, there's something going on there because we see number 39K going in there for Namur as well. And that's the third scoring pass for Crevator. This jam is pivotal in this four points to four points game. Putting on 12, now going for 16 points. Is a th That's three jams in a normal game. And we only have 15 minutes left. This is huge it's for brilliant. Namur. There it is. So with the we're down to the final quarter of the game, and with that, Namur have put themselves some points up on the board. It's 96 plays 111. Like I said, 15 minutes to go, and Doppler is pleased with his team's work. Yeah. And and yeah, this is a pivotal moment. How not to react to this is going to define how the game is going to end. They are lurking. There is a timeout coming. There it is. Is, is that a surprise? No. Bearing in mind what I just said, they are listening to us. They are. Because um, this is this is fundamental. How did Nantes come back? Because we have what may be, you know, in all reality, six, seven jams tops. However, there are two in the box for the mirror for this next jam, which gives non a serious pack yeah. advantage. Yeah. You know, who do they pick as their jammer? But we are starting to see the penalties pay. Foul out just happening for Nantes. That's Greenbergen on yeah. their way for an early bar. And Greenbergen had been fundamental in that sort of blocking formation. So, and I think in this last 15 minutes, with everything on the line, we might start to see some more foul outs. And that is going to also have an impact. It is. It's also going to affect the flow of the game, as we know that you know when we have to remove the skaters from the box, it's often an official timeout, and that that change in momentum, that change in pace, can mess with a team and their focus and the concentration. So, 15 minutes on the clock, a gold medal on the line, bragging rights are there too. 
Who wants it? Nant or Namur? Let's Namur, find out. Namur want this so bad. Nobody wants to get beaten at home. You should see me when I lose at Monopoly at home. <laughs> Flip the table. I don't want to see that here at Namur, but Nant. They're still in the game. They're still in the hunt. But Nant are the higher ranked team. Got to remember they're the higher ranked team. They won six months ago. So it's just, well, seven, seven months ago. So it, it yeah. Can they keep down an Amur in its ascendancy? Exactly. That's the key question right here. What are they going to do now in this jam that's going to change that dynamic? Because, and it, and stay out of the box. I mean, I said it at the beginning of the yeah. half and nobody listened to me. <laughs> Everybody went to the box. <laughs> and you only get seven lives, people. You only get seven lives with Derby Skater. Once you've used all seven, you, like the Green Bergen, get the early bath. And it is, you know, especially if you're one of the fundamental players, and maybe a defense or offensive, or maybe you're a double threat, you can be a huge loss to your team. Yeah. So we're still in an official timeout. There's clearly some discussion happening amongst the refs. And it's giving us all a chance to breathe. Because, you know, we normally, when you're doing broadcast announcing, you sit down, it's all very calm. And I've had to stand up because I want to jump around. Because this game is so thrilling. And we're just seeing such amazing play on track and, and the whole dynamics. But, yeah, I, I want to know how Nantes are going to change this. Because we have seen this be a game of defense. Nantes have excellent offense. I like their selection of Jammer coming out for this one. It is Iron Duck. There's a bit of there's a bit of Derby love going on there. You a and Iron Duck. A little, a little bit. I have to say, I've really enjoyed the progress Iron Duck has made throughout the weekend. Uh, there's a style in there that I really enjoy. B Gaze stands up to the hit off the line, but Ooh. there we go. Iron Duck, quick as you like. Within five seconds, grabs lead down the outside, and it's a power jam in favour of Nod as B Gaze has gone to the box. I don't know if you wanted any more drama, but you're going to get it. Oh, oh denied oh. on the apex jump. That is number 66 from the Namur. That is Los Amelgas. I've ruined your name there. Amgles. Amgles. But great, great blocking work there. So much so that Lizzie Ryder comes in to try and take out that Namur blocker. But Ironda hops on through. And again, it, it, it's the positional blocking there. There were four Namur blockers on the track, but they couldn't reach Iron Duck because uh, uh, not were just in the way. Absolutely. Iron Duck, though, picks a beautiful line round the outside. And again, we don't see Namur blocking through the no. line. And that allows Iron Duck to stay long by on a second scoring pass. I think there was a distraction element because B-Gaze was coming back on track. The team were working out what to do and Iron Duck took, a, took the advantage of that. Oh, Iron Duck gets the back block penalty and B-Gaze is now on a power jam. But B-Gaze, I don't believe, has completed the no. initial. So therefore, still has to do that. Can not kill this penalty. And is looking for the star pass. It'll be to rust in pieces as the pivot. Oh, I believe that's Grumpy who is wearing the pivot uh, right now. They're very very close in numbers and that's, that's the thing the style is so very similar as well but lurking lurking and non to doing an excellent job separating the two until now and the star pass has been achieved and it is grumpy and up who is now jamming for namur but great great penalty kill only allowing that star pass to happen no points and i end up back out on a third scoring pass however not have got two blockers in the box and you're going to need more than that i think to slow grumpy and Grumpy now scoring points, but because there was no lead jammer, there was nothing that Iron Duck could do to stop that happening. But I, it is going to be none that win that jam. The question is by how much? And it's by eight points, four points to Namur, 12 to Nantes, taking this back down to a seven point game. But this is this is the jam not wanted. I mean, admittedly, not the, not the power jam, the penalty, but immediate response to that 15 point jam. Absolutely. Two blockers in the box for Nantes are getting a bit of a talking to from their bench coach. <laughs> uh, maybe just imparted instructions, may just be staying. Could you stay out of here? 
please. 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 Uh, and there's a Namiro block in the box as well, so it will be a three on two in the pack. Bat Smash is out there wearing the start. Bloody Cherry is also wearing the start for none. You've got 12 and a half minutes of this game to go, but we're having an official timeout because yeah. it's been mental. So uh, you can see tournament head referee Sparks may fly um, in the box trying to help the team because there is so much going on in this game. Our, our officials and our NSOs are multitasking <laughs> like a dream right now. Uh, big respect to them for keeping yeah. all of this running so yeah. smoothly as they yeah. have all weekend. I lift my imaginary hat to you. And it's still sorting out what happened. So just a reminder that at 4 p.m. Central European time or 3 p.m. UK time, there is going to be that exhibition game, Le Parpang versus Beastie Roller Derby. It's so be don't go good. anywhere. I mean, have a breather, a cup of tea, maybe a biscuit after this game. Uh, and rue the fact that you are not here with <laughs> us in Belgium, so you can't have a bagel. <laughs> Nobody's going anywhere. In fact, everybody's going backwards. Bloody Cherry forcing Bat Smash out. There's a, there's a penalty call. It's a direction on Bloody Cherry. So Power Jam for Namur. Nantes have two in the box. The pivot is now rejoining. And Bat Smash gets lead once more. But 20 seconds to get lead with only two blockers shows the strength of the defence from Nantes. It does indeed. It is only a six-point game. So a pass and a half will put uh, Namur with a fit, bit more of a comfortable lead if they can. Second. That's first scoring pass completed. I'm pretty but sure Bat Smash thinks that everybody's got four arms. <laughs> and they're using them against them. But Bloody Cherry is back on track on, on her initials. So there is still time for Bat Smash to, to score that pass and then make a decision about what to do about calling it. Absolutely. Nimiro will want to try and put a bit of daylight between themselves and not. They're up to 10 points right now, but that is not comfy. You're going to want to stick on a few more. Around the outside, we see with the star stash, Bloody Cherry doesn't fall in the Mule blockers who reform into a wonderful tripod. That is number 39K going to the box from Nimiro, and they will be left with that tripod and the offense comes in from Nantes. But they're able to brush off that offense and reform. Oh, look at that strength of the blockers. Look, dug in, pushes out, recycle. This is what you want to show uh, new skaters about how to block. You do. I mean, the fluidity here, the, the non-verbal communication going on yeah. between these blockers, their ability to know which gaps they have to fill is beautiful. But right at the end of that, at the entrance of turn three, Bloody Cherry skipped on by to force the call off. Bat Smash worked very hard for the additional yeah. second can pass for all four points were collected by Bat Smash and that takes the mule to 123. Not held on 109 and you are heading into the final 10 minutes here. So that's 14 points. That is not enough for the mule to feel comfortable. And again, it's going to be, we've seen this, a big jam from the mule, not coming back. We need to see that again in this jam, not take control of this jam and the game is still on. Absolutely. We see Namur putting in an offensive player right up top from the get-go, just playing a 3D offense on Adrenaline. Crevator is also dancing around as we see Nont trying to put all four on the D, but Nont coming up the inside with Adrenaline. But my word, Crevator is up and level, and it's a foot race. They're not going to challenge each other. Crevator, in fact, changes her mind, turns around, and Adrenaline says, uh, no. No, we ain't doing I, this dance. I have nothing to gain by this. So, great work from Crevator to, to basically waste that lead opportunity for Nantes. Absolutely, and uh, Namiro with one of the box, so Nantes will have the pack advantage as we open up jam 14 of this second half. Um, Iron Duck will take on B Gaze. And what was annoying in that was those two jammers made it look effortless to mm, skate mm, that fast. Mm, mm, and mm. I just looked at that and cried a little inside. Just, just a small death inside. Uh, the pack swirls around in the jam straight away. Iron Duck coming up front. Offensive support is there just to help break up that Namiro tripod. Those jammers are, so the blockers are stretched out. And your jammer of lead status is Iron Duck. And that's a multiplayer block 
for Nantes, losing another blocker. B Gaze is recycled back to the pivot line. Meantime, Iron Dutch grabs four points. Non answering back. That's what we've seen. That's what we want to see in this incredible game. But B Gaze now out of the pack. But Iron Duck has a full lap on it, completes that second pass. But Namur not able to form that wall. I was thinking that that would have been because not with bullet breaking it up, but it wasn't. Iron Duck had eyes down at the track. There wasn't a knowledge in the bench. Didn't get the call off in time. And two points were picked up by Namur at the end of that jam. Could have been an eight nothing jam. But in fact, they bled two points to Namur. You got to keep your eyes on the yeah. communication. Yeah, so 116 points for Nantes, 125 for Namur, so just a nine-point game. Seven minutes, 43 seconds left. Bat smash versus Bloody Cherry. You've got one in the box for Nantes. Pack advantage with Namur. The pack drives up to the pivot line right now. Everybody's in the middle. It does look like we have Bat smash up front, but that tripod comes in on the outside, locks things down. Rust in pieces, I think, is in there. Not lose a blocker to the box after one just returns. A two all up front doing everything they can to hold back. Smash down. The captain dead, being supported incredibly well by number 3615. That is Johnny. Johnny doing oh. the work, making this long. Oh. And even though that was the Namur jammer who got out. That round of applause was as much for Johnny as it was for Bat Smash. I, I feel like I worked as hard in that <laughs> initial pass as they did. They gave me everything to talk about there. And in we come once more with Bat Smash, who is quite literally smashing their way through. Gets the hips round one and therefore picks up the not on track point as well. Three picked up by Namur in that one. 116 by the 128, six and a half minutes to go. Oof. That's all I've got. Just, I just Oof. need to take a moment. Just take a moment and gather myself because oh, but, 16 so, points. But then we've seen this a number, well, uh, 12 points, a number of times during the game where Namur have got a lead up, but then not change the game and put on a big jam and it's back on. We're back to that battle between Adrenalins and Crevator. Oh, it's a power jam for Namur right now. This could be another Crevator game changing jam right here, but non take the recycle. Crevator gives themselves a little bit more of a run up, finds room on the inside, a classic trademark turn. But that was Brillagon being in exactly the right place at the right time to open up that inside line. It absolutely was, and Crevator is now in, looking for that shirt whip, gets it, but not able to catch and contain. Namur are waiting because Adrenaline is standing in the box and now re-enters the track. Namur only have the three blockers out there, so they have to go full defense. Uh, and Crevator is being held amazingly well by not on this initial scoring pass. They've killed the penalty beautifully. Yeah. Only giving up lead and no points. Everybody is at the exit of turn one. And there is no room to move. Adrenaline looking over the top of the tripod for options. But that is a penalty for Namur. So not with the pack advantage. And it's paying. Adrenaline's pushing up front. Makes it out. Completes her initial pass. So both jammers now on the same pass. They are indeed. Crevator worked very, very hard hard there in that jam and for three points so wasn't able to pick up the full four incredible work from non to stop that that could have been the game defining jam it could and have been. locked that down it was very good and i do think that uh, the Namur jammer just got a bit of a winding right yeah. at the end of that jam oh look i've worked really hard i've got myself three points and oh thanks for that i've got no oxygen anymore <laughs> but we have ourselves an official review. I think we all need a breather. I mean, I'm not averse to them having a little chat about things right now. <sighs> yeah, that that was that. I was watching that jam unfold, going, "This could be it. This could be this sets the end." And actually, it just made it even more exciting. So Nantes now on 116 points, Namur on 131. Four and a half minutes left in this game. So what? Three jams. Yeah, I mean, it might be more than that, given yeah. how quickly some of these jams have gone today. And I think if we go back to the first half, it was a wider point score at this point in the game 
and the Muir, uh, sorry, and not nearly tied it by the end. So this is entirely doable based on the first half. Absolutely, a 15 point jam is yeah. doable. And yeah. you've got time for a couple of jabs. But can you keep those Namur jammers back? Can you hold them scoreless? We've seen not hold them to a single pass. But can you stay out of the box? <laughs> the $60 million question here <laughs> at uh, Skater Round 3. If you have any answers, I'd love them on a postcard. <laughs> Thank you. So it comes down to this last few minutes. And it is, oh, it's on edge of the seat. Everybody here, there's... There's real quiet between jams because everyone is just so wound into this game. The tension is palpable. It really is. Uh, we're just trying to work out what the result of that review was. I'm pretty sure it uh, has been lost, but I could be wrong. It happened yeah. once in 1986. It was an unfortunate incident, and I care not to repeat it here <laughs> in Floreff, Belgium. So it was Nantes that called the official review, so we can see by the flashing dot. So we'll know if the dot goes away that the official review was lost. All eyes on that dot right now. <laughs> it's just unfortunately the entire other side of the venue. I mean, I went to Specsavers, we're all right, we're all right. <laughs> so uh, whilst we wait, we see that our next Gemma matchup is going to be B Gaze versus Iron Duck. Oof. There will be a pack advantage for Nantes in this next Gemma, assuming that nothing else is to happen after the outcome of that official review. And that is the period whistle, so we are back on, just setting up at the pivot line. Even though, as that it, you say, it is usually lies. It is, and look it, at them. It look is lies. Them. You can't trust roller derby players at a pivot line. <laughs> They're like politicians here in a general election. They make promises they will not keep, but promises that they would like to keep right now are jammers, and they are iron duck, and they are B gays, and nobody's getting past that pivot line. Oh, and that was sneaky by the mule trying to course that cut track, but iron duck sees it and jumps back to yield. Oh, Iron oh. Duck! Just like they were getting through their Christmas shop in there, just edged on past everybody on the inside line. But Namur's pivot has gone to the box, so there isn't a chance for a star pass. So with B Games. Oh! oh. I loved it. Iron Duck jumped everybody on the exit of turn two, grabs four points. It's an 11 point game right now. And that inside line is wide open, and Iron Duck skates through for four more. There we go. Not doing what they did in the first half. They are eating that gap. B Gaze takes the hit. The skates go out. Going to have to recycle. A penalty is called. No, so they're able to carry oh, on. And that penalty meant that there wasn't a recycle. So B Gaze now out. But Iron Duck has done three passes, 12 points. It is now a three point game. Damn. So Iron Duck is going into the pack on a fourth scoring pass. B Gaze is in on a first scoring pass. Not trying to stay right out front and away. There goes Iron Duck, completes the pass. Playing it long, paid off. There is now half a lap between Iron Duck and B Gaze. It's a lead change, but it's a lead change back in the other direction as Demure and B Gaze complete that pack, that so pass. Iron Duck's going to want to get the points and call that. Oh, was that called oh. in time? Was it called in time? It was. They shut out Namur on that pass. Two points picked up. 18 points, our highest jam of the game. It's a one-point game right now. And if I sound like I'm an excitable Roller Derby fan in your living room, it is because I am. Two minutes, 25 seconds left on the clock. One point in this game. Everybody is just like, oh, my Lord. Right, I'm out of my seat. Yep. On the edge of the balcony of judgment, and Buzz is wearing the star for none. A pivot extraordinaire, and look at the energy Buzz is putting in there. Bat Smash is out as well. So Bat Smash doesn't get lead. It is not with lead. Buzz has been an absolute machine for none this weekend, and Buzz has put the burners on and is coming in hot. Hits that Namur pack hard as Bat Smash is being held amazingly well. John up front, there's that one on one blocking we saw earlier. Oh, and oh, that's a cut track for Buzz. Bat Smash completes the initials. Buzz goes to the penalty box. I am losing my mind here in the last minute and a half of this game. Bat Smash.
Smash, however, looks calm and collected. Coming in, only two knob blockers to beat. But, but remember, Buzz has points in her pocket when she comes out. So any penalty kill here by Nantes is going to have an impact. Oh. That's a multiplayer block for Nantes. Down to one blocker on track right now. And Bat Smash is coming back round. Buzz is standing in the box, but Bat Smash having two Nantes blockers up front. Nimua catch themselves a blocker. It is Johnny to try and slow things down. And we see Buzz coming back out. Buzz is determined to make up for that penalty. Gets out, completes the pass, bags all four points. It's all level, but of course, in the pack is Bat Smash. Bagging points right now. Buzz is coming back in though. No! Bat Smash is on the way to the box. It's a power jab in the other direction now for Non. It's a one point game. Buzz comes in hot and hard. It's legal, it's fine. The support comes in. I have goosebumps. There are only 22 seconds left in the period. There's six on the jab clock. There's nothing in this. It's a one point game. I want, there it is. How many points? Four. But Buzz has picked up all four points. But what did Vigo's go into the box with nothing? That is it. Into the middle. Timeout. Timeout. Furious timeout being called by Doppler. It is 139 to the Mew. None have taken it in the last jam to 143. But a timeout has been called. Are we going to get another jam? Don't forget, Bat Smash is in the penalty box. It will be a power jam start to none, even if Namir can force another jam. I think that Doppler launched himself into the middle to ensure that timeout. I have never seen anybody move that quickly. So, Namur crowd starts to liven up. It's all to play for. It looks like we are going to get one more jam. I think the production team are about to cry. Uh, the, the tension in this building is off the chart. It's like everybody saved all of their energy for this game. Yes. We said this would be tasty. We said it would be the gold medal game. Unlike blockers on a pivot line, I would not lie to you, my <laughs> wonderful friends of roller derby. Oh, and that's the game whistle? No, that's the end of timeout whistle. So we get, we get that running oh, whistle. Oh, an official timeout has just been called. Right, I'm going to yeah. wig in to our in-house broadcasters. So just waiting to see what the reason for that official timeout is. Unfortunately, that reason is in French. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, so we will guess by what's got... Oh, bat it's smash! It's a win! No. But it, the pajama was released from the what yes jammer was released at, as a result of that official review oh, which means wow. that Crevator is able to take the line there are three points in this game we are going into a final jam one second on the period clock the penalty box is empty there is a full complement of blockers for everybody to deal with it's iron duck versus <laughs> crevator and i know you were ready but our officials weren't and they want to make sure everything is set because we are deciding this tournament skate around three right here right now in this last jam and doppler with those last second instructions to his team making the best of that official timeout but it's, look at the scoreboard. The scoreboard has changed. It is 141 to 142. It's a one-point game now. Yes. And there's and been a lot happening. That's in that. what that official timeout, go to the jam ref, went for the points correction because you know absolutely have to get it right because everything comes down to this jam. If you are not on the edge of your seat or standing on your feet right now. I want to know how you are this relaxed <laughs> and you need to teach me because I am hanging off the edge of the balcony here at Skate Around 3 dying to find out who's taking this home, Namur or not. And it could go either way, it's all going to come down to lead, it's going to come down to who gets lead jammer and stays out of the box. Everybody's available to play offense. 3D 1-0 is likely to be what we're going to see here. Or do they go one? We've got a lonely blocker hanging out at the back and here come Namur. 
I end up versus Crevator for the final jam of this game. There is no time on the period clock. This is it. Crevator pushing up front, not able to reform, holding front one to be. And it's Crevator! The place erupts. Doppler is actually running the track with Crevator at this particular point in time. Nemur in on a scoring pass with Crevator. Iron Duck still on the initial. Recycled by Brulagom. A high block is called on the pivot, Brulagom. And Iron Duck is able to get through and complete the initial. Yes, does so cleanly and safely. So, Crevator wanting to be absolutely sure as many of those four points as possible. Now calls the jam. And in the dying seconds of the yep. game, your host of Skate Around 3, Namur, as you can hear from the crowd right now, take the victory. They are on the pivot line and they have bundled into each other with joy that can only be described as unreserved. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm nearly in tears just from the emotion of that jam. That was that was an experience. Dear Roller Derby, I love you. Never leave me. <laughs> and we don't because we still have another game to go. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. But your winners of Skate Around 3 are the Namur Roller Girls who pulled it out of the bag in the final minutes. So beating a higher ranked team because WFTDA rankings are nearly as important as trophies and medals. <laughs> this will be a positive result for Namur for the WFTDA ranking and the winners of the tournament. But not clearly distraught. I mean, I want to hug them. I yeah, want to hug every single hug one of Nod right now because they, there's, I feel like there was almost nothing else they could do. No. And it feels so unfair that the whole hour comes down to that last minute and a half. We could have saved ourselves a lot of time. Let's just have one jam at the beginning. <laughs> Whoever wins it, they get to take the trophy home. How about that? Oh, so, anyway. Stop. There's nothing more we can say about that Should game. we bid our lovely viewers adieu? We will. We are back at 4 p.m. We're back in an hour. Um, so 4 p.m. Central European time, 3 p.m. UK time for Le Parpin versus Beastie Roller Derby. I've been Dawn Mistress. I've been Riggs. I'm going to go and lie down now in a darkened room with a cold towel on my head. Thank you for joining us here at Skate Around 3. Your winners today, Nemur Roller Girls. Take care and goodbye.